everybody. Welcome to the next episode of the Gaming Nights of the Roundtable. Um, we're back again, uh, this time to take on another topic of uh, discussion. Uh, we'll get to that in a bit uh, a bit later. But just to let us, just to let you know, any uh, first-time viewers, we're, we're the Gaming Rig. We're a team of reviewers and um, hardcore gamers and casual gamers alike. Uh, we work for a website called www.thegamingrig.co.uk. Uh, each week or each every couple of weeks, we meet up uh, via Google+. Plus. Uh, to chat about topics of interest of uh, gaming, things we've covered so far, things like controversies, uh, art uh, to gaming, um, uh, favourite uh, protagonists, favourite games, etc, etc. So each each week or more or less each time we're going to come in and kind of just have a chat and a bit of a laugh really. It's all quite relaxed. Uh, we, we also want some fans to join us, um, so if you ever want to get in touch with us, just hit us up as on email, thegamingriguk at gmail.com, or just come along to the website and get in contact with us that way. Um, okay, so just to start, really, I just thought we'd go around the table and introduce ourselves quickly um, and kind of go from there. We also, the website also hosts uh, competitions every month and every couple of weeks. Um, and we did one uh, most recently for a nice uh, new headset, a uh, nice gaming headset, uh, multi platform uh, from venom.co.uk, um, venomuk.com, sorry. Um, and it's a it, it's nice little headset reviewed on the website as well. And I believe it was a Jordan Greenwood fan of the site that's one. So if you are watching this, Jordan, can you please get in touch with us? We will put your name out there a couple of days after this has gone live. Uh, so I imagine midweek. So Jordan Greenwood of, of the site, please get in touch. Uh, email us at thegamingriguk um, at gmail.com. That would be great. Um, and without that further ado, let's get started. So going down the table then um, to start off, James, please introduce yourself. Uh, hi, I'm James. Uh, I'm one of the reviewers for the Gaming Rig, um, and I'm just here to chat a load of bollocks. <laughs> cool, fair enough. Not a bad thing. Uh, Martin? Sup? <laughs> nice, cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do you, you want to go on? You're a okay, fan of the site? Um, or... Yeah, I'm a fan of the site. Um, it's fun. <laughs> Sorry, I'm screwing this all up, but anyway. It's fine. Um, yeah, don't know what else to say. Just saying I'm Martin. <laughs> well, I'd like to personally thank you for some of the art you do for the site. We're currently using your your recent pictures sent in to us as our cover art, actually, of the Facebook page. Um, cool. Really liked your uh, Leon character you designed for us as well back in the day. And some yeah. variations um, you do send in, so I really do like some of your art, so thanks for that. Um, moving down the line then, Ryan. Hey everybody, uh, my name is Ryan. I contribute a lot of video content to the website. Occasionally, I'll do reviews as well. I will be your master of ceremonies for this evening. Um, yeah, and that, that's who I am, and that's what I do. And hopefully, tonight will be a good giggle. Cool. <laughs> I, I imagine it will be. Uh, Toby? Hi, guys, I'm Toby. Um, I am a reviewer for the site as well. Um, I've done a few now, so just getting into the swing of things. And uh, yeah, general gaming fan. You're our Warrants Nintendo guy, really, aren't you? Because you, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's good. That's good. We, yeah, it's good to have Nintendo on there, really. Um, William. Hello, I'm Hi. William. I do some reviews and news. Extraordinary. Indeed, uh, you are. <laughs> that's really about it, and I'll probably talk some shite on here. So yeah. I think we all will. I think that's kind of what we do. We we kind of leave all our shite for the week and kind of bring it all into this chat. You come to the right place. And apparently is you guys were you in it and enjoying it. So yeah, if you if you do like us, subscribe, uh, comment, like like the page, uh, like like the website. Okay, uh, just end on then really, uh, just for the intros. My name's Alan. Um, I'm kind of the owner of the gaming rig. Kind of designed as like a big portal really for all gaming. So if you're a fan and you'd like to maybe send some stuff in or you'd like to come and view some stuff, just literally come and look at us on the website www.thegamingrig.co.uk. Um, we'll quickly start with our games we've been playing this week, and then I'll hand you over to uh, Mr. Ryan. So, James, game of the week? Uh, oof. It's one and two. I've been uh, caning Monster Hunter Ultimate for the 3DS. Just been getting a bit wrapped up in that one again because it's an addictive bastard of a game. Uh, and I've been also trying to give a good whack at uh, Bioshock uh, Infinite. And how are you enjoying those two? Oh, Infinite has been getting me quite wrapped up, but I've not really had a chance to properly... Yeah, sit down and play it, but, you know, with Monster Hunter, I don't have to move out of bed, so that's been getting most of my attention. Fair and enough. Also, the toilet. 
and the kitchen and everywhere else. <laughs> and anyway, you can take the monsters. Yeah. Yeah, no worries. Martin, <laughs> game of the week? Um, I've been playing free games this week. Um, firstly was Bioshock Infinite, which I got on day one of release. Been f- already completed it once, and I'm just proceeding through my second playthrough, and I've been enjoying it a lot. Uh, the other two games I've been playing recently as well is Aliens Colonial Marines, which is actually surprisingly good, but still there is really dumb, annoying parts. But um, mm. but at the very moment, I've been trying to complete Nino Kuni, Wrath of the White Witch, which is kind of personally my favorite at the moment, but I really love Bioshock Infinite as at, on the top. Yeah, all good games then. And Ryan, game of the week? Uh, my game, I'm playing a lot at the moment. I kind of went on a bit of a spree. Uh, I'm caning Far Cry 3 at the moment, which I'm thoroughly enjoying. But uh, as I've spent a lot of time on it, I've moved on to Bioshock Infinite. Yeah. Again, uh, like James, barely scratched the surface. I'm hoping it unravels a bit because I, I feel like I've hit a bit of a bland spot and I'm hoping that the game elaborates a bit from there. And then I picked up Resident Evil 6 for 9 99 because I have a friend who comes around and we always have to have a co-op game going. So yeah. I bought Resident Evil 6 so we could co-op our way through that. Um, Good co-op game. Yeah, I mean, I bar- barely scratched the surface of that. We got to the end of Leon's first chapter <laughs> and just had a lot of fun going, Help me, Leon! At the screen. <laughs> Leon is actually the the best campaign of that game. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it is good. It is back to it. For the rest of the game. But well, yeah. it's back. It's back. Leon's is probably the most traditional uh, Resident yeah. Evil horror. It's the easy it's, mode, no, really. no, no, no bad thing. But yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 so it's just those those two those or three? three games. Those three games. Oh, uh, okay. Game. All right, cool. That's cool. And uh, Toby, what's your hit list for the week? Um, mainly, um, well, favorite game of the week has to be Luigi's Mansion Two. Oh. Um, How are you finding that? Yeah, good. Um, it's got a, swap, um, a few tweaks to the original, kind of how it plays through, but um, yeah, I love it. It's very good. Cool. I was going to pick that um, up today. Yeah, well, I, was gonna, I was going to pick up a 3DS just for that game. It looks it looks brilliant. Kind of the the animation and of his character is like spot on from the original. Oh, ah, right. Oh, cool. I read somewhere that they um, kind of based it on Mr. Bean, which you can <laughs> which I can you can see. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, it's really fun. Um, and then I've also been playing um, the last story on the way, but I still haven't completed it. I was thinking <laughs> I'm right at the end. <clears throat> Hopefully. And you're both enjoying them then. Yeah, but Luigi's Mansion is definitely game of the week. That's cool. And and William, your games of the week? Uh, wow. Lots of World of Warcraft. <laughs> you're back to World of Warcraft. Yeah, level. So it must be you must be hunkering to go back on it right now, then, because we're making you not play it unless you're actually, actually multitasking. I'm actually glad I got off it. <laughs> okay, I've right. been playing far too much of that. <laughs> I got 63. You pick up World of Warcraft, you're going to hell. <laughs> yeah. And then I've been playing StarCraft 2 on and off, really. Just trying to get up, get Wings of Liberty finished to do Heart of Swarm. Then Bioshock through Infinite. Yeah, I've not started that yet. I have three hours of Bioshock Infinite. Ah, uh, okay. Fair enough. I don't enough. find myself getting into it too much. I'm not, I'm, I'm, yeah. I mean, um, just just quickly, me. Uh, I, my two uh, main ones of the week are, are Bioshock Infinite, which I have started and, and liked both James and Ryan. I'm feeling a bit stale, mate, because it seems to have got to a certain point now. I'd be like, all I'm doing, like Ryan said before, is just seems to be killing people. And I just, not as a bad thing. I mean, executing them with the grappling skyhook is awesome. But after a while, I'm kind of a bit like, hmm. But I'm hoping it opens up. And to be fair, from the reviews I've read, the review we have on our website as well, uh, from another reviewer that can make it in today, he, he seems to think it opens up quite well. So yeah, it does. That. Um, and the other one is Tomb Raider. I'm still, I'm, it's so I don't even know why I want 100% in that game. I just want to collect everything. I don't know what it is about that game. I just, I love just going and exploring and collecting and doing the tombs and the little bits and the challenges. I just, it's so fun. One of the things uh, games on one hundred percent. I never usually bother if all you're doing is hunting stuff, but with yeah. Tomb Raider, there is a part of me as well that's like, I have to find everything. Yeah, speaking. And of I will. Raider, I'm, I'm at eighty-seven percent now, and that's I'm not bad, at, really. I'm at ninety-eight, and there's nice. a couple that are eluding me, and I, I eventually just went, "Fuck it, I'll come back to it later," because it got so difficult. Yeah, it does get a bit, uh, a bit annoying. Yeah, Here's definitely. one for you, Alan. What? <laughs> <laughs> nice. 
play college girls from your country now. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Nice one. Okay. All right. Well, thanks everybody for coming out tonight. Um, we will move on now because um, like something that I uh, like to do as well is kind of. As though I host these mostly every week, I like to get everybody else to kind of, you know, maneuver around and host as well. So for the rest of the entertainment for tonight, I'm handing you over to Ryan Scully. It would be a good opportunity to talk about um, previous consoles, future consoles and things like that. So the theme for today is uh, going to be consoles, because although a lot of the time the same game can come out on many different consoles, a lot of us will prefer to play the same game on a specific console. So I think we'll get the ball rolling. Um, first question is, what's your personal favorite console and why? Um, I'll field this one. Um, I would have said this time last year, I would have told you that the Dreamcast was my personal favorite console. Oh. Until uh, I picked up a PS2. I only really started playing my PS2 a while back. Um, I, I missed it the first time around. I bought an original Xbox. And then I just saw all these games that really interested me for the PS2 and was like, we'll have a bit of that. And uh, yeah, since seeing the sort of library and the sort of games that are available on the PS2, there's there's just no contest. That is one of the best-selling consoles ever and deservedly so. Absolutely fantastic console. So, I mean... Um, yeah, I just want to hear what anybody else thinks, what anybody else's favourite console is and why. So, James, you're the first in the list from where I'm sat. Do you want to tell us about your favourite console? Uh, mine has to be the uh, Nintendo GameCube, right? Mm. Because I always felt, whenever I had it, when I first got it, and from then on, it was always kind of punching above its belt, <laughs> right? It was really above, like, fighting in a different weight class against some of the other consoles. I mean, PS2 had just a, like staggering amount of third party compatibility um xbox was toting a lot more like processor power than the others whereas gamecube was still managing to bring out some pretty decent competitors game wise and some I've resident evil that. exclusives yeah, yeah. i've got <laughs> the resident evil one I, remake when i thought about what my favorite console of all time was i really strained myself because gamecube did come up there simply because some of my favorite games of all time are on the gamecube Met same Wind Waker. Wind Waker, yeah. <laughs> Mario, the Thousand Year Door. You know, they are some of my favorite games ever, and they were all on the GameCube. The only good Soul Calibur game. There's a good Soul Calibur? <laughs> yeah, the, the, it was a rare one, Soul Calibur 2. You could oh. play as Link or Hihachi or Spawn. I yeah. remember I remember when it was called Soul Blade. Yeah, I remember that, and it was still shit then. <laughs> <laughs> mm. But yeah, I mean, I just I just felt it was a really solid console. I, I, I genuinely think, I've, I've not checked the uh, specs lately, but I think it might have actually been more powerful than the Wii. It, cert it did, wasn't more powerful than the Wii, but I think out of all the consoles out at that period, I think it had the superior graphics card. If mm, you're yep. going to boil it down into PC terms, I think like although the Xbox and the PS2 had much more oomph behind it, some mm. of the graphics the GameCube was capable of were pretty nice, pretty shiny, and they well, ran I mean, a very old lick. Uh, Zelda Twilight Princess was actually originally released for the GameCube, right? Yeah. But it, 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 not, it must have been on the GameCube for less than a week or so until the Wii came out, and then they sort of quickly retracted everything. Don't get on the Wii. I mean, a GameCube copy of Twilight Princess is hellishly expensive now. I have one now. You have one now? I have oh. one. I bought it for 30 quid. On eBay, 400. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Cling on to it, because that is worth a lot. Oh, I'm never letting it go. Absolutely. I have um, the um, reboot of Metal Gear Solid 1. What, the GameCube? Yeah. I, keep meaning, I, I really wanted to grab that, and I never did. I never it's, got that. It's really hard. It's really annoying how much it costs. It's like 60 quid for a pre-owned. Are we talking about Twin Snakes? Yeah. Mm. See, it was I a good game, one. good graphics and everything, but the one thing, the only thing that bugged me is I think the only voice actor that didn't make a reprisal other than... Um, was Grey Fox. Was Grey Fox, right? Because I think Grey Fox's speech at the end of Metal Gear Solid 1, in the original, was just one of the best game speeches ever. You know, the whole, we are not tools of the government! Wasn't, um, <laughs> in the PlayStation 1 version of Metal Gear Solid, was voiced by the same guy who did DARPA Chief? Um... I'm not 100% sure. I, I mean, think it is. I think it is. I'm almost certain it's a guy who also appeared in The Simpsons, as the guy who's, you are Homer Simpson. Also, as the random Jewish guy in Independence Day of, David, should I call my mother? 
It's but all no the exact same gravelly voice. Like like that that <laughs> but oh, just Steve. Okay, great game. Steve Blum dominates all voice acting. <laughs> no, 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 no. Nolan North. There's a video on YouTube called Nolan you... North is every video game character, and it is like an hour-long video compilation. No, of if you video game characters voiced by Nolan North. If you ever look up Steve Blum, you'll be quite surprised how many vi apparent video game appearances he has been. Same with He's John got a world Nebula. record for it. Really? He's got he got a world record last year for being in the most video game appearances. Wow. <laughs> how many was that, Martin? Um, let me double check on it. I think it's over two hundred. And then Martin, tell us what is your uh, all-time favorite console set? Um, I think because I kind of. I kind of came in late in the games console side because I spent most of my childhood playing on the computer on the PC, just That's spending still still on games. bargain bin games. But uh, my first console that I really enjoyed was the PlayStation 3 for its exclusives. Yeah. But um, recently, I've been finding quite a lot of fun with the Wii U. There's no games on the Wii U. Um, <laughs> no, there is. No, there is some really good games. There but are. It's just, but it's just at the moment it's not, like not a great start at the moment because they were yeah. promising Colonial Marines, which I tried to wait for, but it never came out at the end. Yeah. But um, no, but I kind of like the Wii U with the ideals of it. But apart from that, I'll. T but I may I mostly like the PlayStation Three for its exclusives, such as Little Big Planet, the Kill for Kill Zone franchise. Yep. <laughs> and um, what they've been doing recently, um, quite a bit, is like putting a lot of their PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 1 games on the ne network as a, like an online download. Yeah, it is, is Tomba available yet? Which one? Tomba. Oh yeah, I think it is. Oh, I'm buying a PS3. A quite, um, <laughs> a quite a lot. Of, they even got the, um, the first... No, they, they pretty much got all the Resident Evil games from 1 to 4. Oh, I don't care about that. I just want Tomba. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think Tomba's on it. Oh, I'm buying a PS3. I love Tomba. Nobody bought that game, and it was brilliant. One game I wanted on the PS3 that just <laughs> never turned up was, um, The Last Guardian. The Last Guardian? Team Ico. I, I hate to break it to you, James, The Last Guardian will never turn up. <laughs> it will! It will! You keep telling yourself that, because that's all the game has to go on now, is the hope and dashed dreams of a thousand fanboys. Is so all... they said for Project Hammer. And I mean, to be fair, people yeah, want to Duke still Nukem. Hasn't come out. People <laughs> want to Duke Nukem forever. Look, Look what they got. Not. So yeah, yeah, maybe, but... maybe you don't want. Maybe you don't might not want to wait for this game. Just saying. It's a kind. Of, it's a bit of a jump to go from expecting a crass '90s <laughs> man from some sort of beautiful Team Ico game. Is it? Is it, it is a bit. <laughs> right. Throwing feces is a jump from some sort of griffin creature. <laughs> You haven't played the director's cut then, obviously. Alan, your favourite console, sir? Nintendo 64! Oh, what a console. I love that console, to the day I die. Even though like my favourite games are on the PlayStation, Resident Evil 2, Final Fantasy VIII, Final Fantasy VII, those are like, my favourite ones. I think Resident Evil 2 Nintendo was on the 64. I think it was, yeah. yeah. But Nintendo 64, as in, I just I love that console. I just do. <laughs> I just I, I I mean, even though you know now I'm obviously a, a, so to speak an adult, it just it had some of the best dumb fun games I've ever played: Banjo Kazooie, Mario 64, <laughs> Mario Kart, GoldenEye, uh, Lilac know, Wars, Perfect Dark, Lilac Wars. It just they're just this this constant flow of just good quality titles for a long time. And I just it's all didn't Microsoft see that. Rareware. Yeah, well, let's not, get, let's not get into that one. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Fucking hell, bastards. But no, generally speaking, Nintendo 64 is, is, my, is the daddy for me. I had a feeling the N64 would be somebody's favourite, because it nearly always is. It was a close it's, for me. How can it not be? It well, just... I'll, uh, I'll get to that. Do you not like it? Let, let's wait until later. <laughs> no, fair enough. No, I just yeah, I love it. I just it, it holds a lot of memories like with childhoods and stuff because everybody around my area had it, and you'd go around and you'd play that nights of gold and I, and I mean yeah, you get your Halo parties and you have your multiplayer like you used to, but oh. I don't know back then it just it wasn't the same. 
It's like it, it felt more homely, you know. That makes any yes. sense. The, the more, incident, more friends. Well, it did have that about it. I mean, the, it was uh, maybe a little bit behind technologically, like the cartridge thing. But it, it, yeah. it, it wasn't like you say. It was it a console in a way, and there was there was a real sense of getting together and having golden eye parties and things like that. And really, that's something that Nintendo tap into a lot better than a lot of other Shit. a lot of other developers do. So yeah, I, I will say I will say that for the N64, it did have that very humble, very like friendly almost quality about it. Um, I, I still hate it. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, Toby, I imagine your favourite console is likely to be a Nintendo one. Am I right? Yeah, you would be very right. Um, um, it's a bit of a yeah, it's a it's a mix up between the N64 and the GameCube. Um, but the GameCube has the edge for me, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, only because it's nothing to do with what's inside, it's nothing to do with that, it's just purely the game. But some of the, between the GameCube and the N64, both of them had games, kind of like Alan was saying, from my childhood, that have, it kind of shaped the way you game. <laughs> okay. Um... Uh, what can I say? Um, oh yeah, that they had little small discs as well. That was always fun. That was good. And and the fact they had a handle. What game console had a handle? <laughs> yeah. It's so random. Well, um, didn't it also have like always, um, something sorry. people always bring up about the GameCube is the handle. I never understood why was, the handle was such a big thing for people. It was because it was so because it just made it portable apparently, and you could just pick <laughs> it up and take it across. It was, it, it was handy, definitely, but I don't yeah. know anyone who owned a GameCube and was like, thank fuck for this handle. <laughs> if, if, if Xbox oh, had a handle, I would be jizzing all over it. I'm sorry. Then it wouldn't be much use. <laughs> I'd be pretty heavy as well. Uh, what's happened to your Xbox? I, um... Dropped it down the stairs. Handle broke. Something dripped into my Xbox. <laughs> Probably the ha something to do with the handle, I don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> I just lost control. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I fucking love Halo, what can I say? <laughs> Halo is a good game. Anyway, yeah. Toby, Toby, do continue, sir. Um, I was just going to say, and you could also change the, um, there was a, the circular um, logo in the middle that said Nintendo Game Crew. Yep. You could pop it out and then change it. So you could have really? it changeable. Yeah, because um, one of the mags back then, the Nintendo mags, they used to... I think that was from where, I don't know where I got them, but I had a massive collection of like... My mind is blown. Yeah. So basically you could pop it out and then put something else. So I'd change it like every month or so. To this day, I never knew that. No, no, I did not. I never knew you could do that. I'm doing this now. As soon as we're done here, I'm doing it. The games from there were some of my favourites. Got the old... Didn't, um... ...series, Beautiful Joe... Oh, yeah. What a game. Oh, and also one which I never know how to pronounce. Um, I don't know if it's Baton Kratos or Baton Kratos. I don't know played that. And also, yeah. GameCube yeah, had the best, best ever launch game titles. And Luigi's Mansion One. That yeah. literally made me fall Star in love with Luigi. Started off. Yeah. Uh, Star Fox Adventure. Yeah. Resident Evil fun. Four. Resident Evil <laughs> Four. Yeah. The because thing. I think Resident Evil Four was originally a GameCube exclusive. It was at first, yeah. But then they realized yeah. how much money they made, and we were just like, okay, we're well, going to put this on <laughs> everything else. PlayStation 2. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> uh, William, can you, would you care to share with us your favorite console? Could I count my PC? You can, absolutely. I would count my PC, because I have most of my favorite games are on PC, like Warcraft 3 and Age of Empires and stuff. Yeah, I love playing games on PC. I've got to say, a lot of my favourites are as well. Deus Ex, Grim Fandango, fantastic games. But um, no, the PC absolutely counts. It's an avenue for gaming. So no, I don't see why we discount it at all. And the same with iPhones or iPads, even. I get... have a Mac now, so half of my Steam list is gone. Boo! Oh yeah, but you know. That was by choice. No one forced you to. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's it's not like cancer or AIDS. No, you chose my, to my get Mac. You chose to get a Mac. Just, it's just because I needed to run Adobe software for my art. <laughs> then download Adobe software. I don't I see know what the problem that, is. Bitch. Never mind. Let's go <laughs> back to William. But yeah. I know what you're saying. The Mac is quite good for like artists <laughs> and stuff. Go on, carry on with him. Uh, 
there's nothing better than playing Skyrim on your PC and putting Game of Thrones things in, discovering that they have a character in this mod that is ten times stronger than you. <laughs> you know the mountain from Game of Thrones? Yeah. He's in the damn game. And he oh, brilliant. In the starting zone. My favourite mod I saw on it was um, My Little Ponies mod. Oh, where God, all that. of all of yeah, the dragons are replacing, and it's just got a my, like one of the ponies just ripping a guy up and just going shaking him in his mouth like a rag doll. Has <laughs> anyone seen the Rowdy Roddy Piper Dragon mod? Yes. Uh, like, yes. If a dragon's arriving, it will just play this in the background. It just plays this very distant Rowdy Roddy Piper. <laughs> and this dragon just—it's got his like bandana on and his dreadlocks, and it just. Oh wow. In and, uh... Did you um, download the uh, the Portal 2 exclusive mod? No. Is this the one where little robots in it? Yeah, it's the space orb. Yeah, you can get the space orb from Portal 2. I and... saw the video of how you obtain it. You're just basically walking in a field, and it, you just hear space, and it just smashes into the ground. <laughs> That's yeah. amazing. And then you, you just pick it up, and, and it's in your inventory. There. He's like, like, space, space, space. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's like really the gun cool. in Borderlands 2 that talks. Hmm. Or shield, depending how you choose it. Yeah. Is there anything else uh, you wanted to add about PC gaming, William? I know for a lot of people it's the modding community, it's the fact that, you know, they've got a much better selection of indie games as well, and really, indie games are making a massive impact on the industry, and I think PC's fantastic for that. So many indie yeah. games come out on PC. And a year later, you see them all over the consoles. Minecraft being a very good example, Terraria mm. being another one. I think there's about... a um, there's a website about that's kind of leading the idea of promoting indie games called Indie City. DRM is the huge downside to PC gaming. Yeah, if you get stuck with a bad game, you're stuck with it. Yeah, that's. I mean, Sim City. There was a massive. <laughs> Sim City was like the biggest gaming blunder in the world. It was the Bodger and Badger. The biggest gaming blunder in the world was Duke Nukem Forever. All right, Fuck second. <laughs> I mean, with Sim City, there's like, oh yeah, hey guys, you like Sim City? Yeah. Do you want to pay more for it? Yeah. Do you want to get half the game? Yeah. Wait. <laughs> Let's move things along a little bit then. Um, can anyone think of a console that never got the recognition it deserved? Um, I'd like to say um, we've covered everything about the GameCube, and absolutely the GameCube didn't get the recognition it deserved. The Wii U still isn't getting the recognition it deserved. But I would say um, the Dreamcast is probably the one for me. Uh, it had a two year lifespan. You know, everybody, a lot of people glossed over it waiting for the PS2 to come out. But if you look at it, it had it was so far ahead of its time, not in terms of raw processing power, but the VMU, the memory card with the screen on it, we're now seeing that even in like the most innocuous of places like the Nintendo DS, it's been continued by the Wii U or the connectivity between the PS Vita and the PS3. We're seeing things in gaming only now that the Dreamcast was doing a hell of a long time ago, including like online multiplayer. I had um, Unreal Tournament, or no, Quake 3, sorry, for my Dreamcast. Oh, yeah. 56K connection, completely lag free gaming. <laughs> On a 56K modem playing Quake 3. That's uh... absolutely bizarre to even think about today. But on the Dreamcast, it was possible. And I think, you know, it was a humble, basic uh, console, made more for arcade games than sprawling RPG. Yeah. Didn't the um, Dreamcast sounded like a jet engine? It did. Do you know what? I got one recently for a birthday. You turn it on. Jesus Christ, I thought my house was going to lift off. It is the noisiest fucking console ever. When it Cause, um, it's like a submarine door opening. It's like... Because I was watching a video um, about like these guys playing it, playing a game on the Dreamcast called Power Stone 2. Oh, yeah, good game. <laughs> and um, the like, all you hear in the background is the console, like it's pro, like it's fans spinning and stuff. Uh, James, what is for you the most underrated console you play? See, I was gonna say maybe the Dreamcast or the Saturn, right? <laughs> Although, but now I'm thinking not so much so because the Saturn was a pretty abysmal console. It was but one, bad. but one thing I loved about it is it's just a case of you could. It, it was like something out of, I don't know, Transformers or Power Rangers. Like, if you want it back, you just plug shit into it. <laughs> yeah, it, it was a simple one. It also had Knights as well. Yeah. It's been LA, for those who haven't played it yet. Knights is an absolutely wonderful game. Absolutely. 
Yeah, One but... thing I'm gonna actually say is, is that's weird. It's uh, the 3DS, mm-hmm. right? Really? Because I, I, it gets a lot of press, yeah. But I think it's it's not considered a serious console, right, yeah. by a lot of people, right? And I think one of the biggest crimes ever is when it created its first blockbuster amazing game, right? Which which was um, Resident Evil Revelations. Yeah. Oh, right? And I now it, it, it has been left in the dust of its own creation as everyone else has bought the rights to it. Like it's some soiled whore that they've gotten what they want. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and it, it's, it's like, and it, no, you know, in a year's time, no people are going to say this game wasn't for the 3DS, was it? And it's like, I invented that. It's going to be the crazy old man at the bus stop who said, like, I invented bubble gum, and you're just, <laughs> <laughs> and you're just like, yeah, yeah, whatever, you crazy old prick. <laughs> <laughs> So the 3DS, you think the 3DS is the crazy old man at the bus? <laughs> <laughs> the crazy old man of console gaming. I mean, it's got some brilliant, like, actual, I reckon, you know, current-gen console, like, comparable games. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. and no one even cares. Everyone's like, oh, nah, it's just a crazy just, Nintendo gimmick. I think it's, yeah. like, not many people care for, like, portable consoles. Mm. To my opinion. That's all I'm saying. It's like... Not many people are interested in getting a portable console. They'd rather get like the the sort of the proper console that you hook hook up to your TV and stay at home and play it. I think it's I because mean, like the iPad and the iPod have taken the handheld market. And yeah, they, 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 they I mean, are just painting the handheld market. I mean, I just went and picked up a 3DS for ninety quid the other day, right? Because really? I had ninety quid. Yeah, I, I had one a while back, and I, I sold it to you know. Di- deal with my horrible crack addiction and where did you get this 90 quid 3ds Dangerous game save down the pub. really yeah game um uh, every 3ds i see a game is like it's 120 odd quid you're not looking hard enough but um okay but um either way i mean and i think my latest one i've been playing is monster hunter ultimate right oh, yeah. which is in fact a remake of uh monster hunter try for the uh, Wii, and this is it's the same game with more content, <laughs> right? So it's in fact and that's improved... cross platform, right? Um, yeah, it's all. It also is uh, on the Wii um, Wii U. Yeah, I was thinking right? of getting it for the Wii U, where so you like... c- you can like pretty much um, trade between your save games. Move on for now, um, Martin. What is what do you consider to be an underrated console? I personally think the Wii. No, I, no, because um, there was some really, really good exclusives that I found a lot of fun with. Yeah. That I thought they were kind of game changing in a way, like their style and stuff. Like yeah. I think the biggest one that really, that kind of feel like it was a, it was a super awesome game, but it's just like it never got appreciated because it was on the Wii. What's that? Was uh, Mad World. I've been playing that. It didn't click. It just really? didn't click for me. Yeah, I um. I can see what they were going for in it. It's a platinum game, so it's got that platinum polish. But yeah. um, I, it, ne- it just never clicked. Just never clicked. You no, know, I just I, to, to me, it was just the art style it was using. Yeah, it was a cool art style. But, it uh, wasn't like, but also it was just. I think it was also some of the exclusives the the we had, like Metroid Prime Three, Corruption, and like the Metroid series. <laughs> Yeah, the, that, I thought that was the worst Metroid Prime, I have to say. Met, the yeah. first Metroid Prime is one of the best games ever made, but Corruption... The second one's the worst one. I, I didn't like the second one. Yeah, it, it had the atmosphere of the second one, and the level design of the first one, best Metroid game ever. Metroid mm. Prime 3, I kind of erased from my mind. They just... Everything that was good about Metroid... <laughs> yes, That's the first of the well, most of my, um... Like, um... Like I think the other real, the thing that I really liked more about the Wii, which kind of like the fun of it, was um, playing Super Smash Brothers Brawl. Absolutely great game. Which, oh, which... I prefer Melee. They were both good. They were practically the same game. I mean, a lot of people yeah. do Melee, and I I love that on the GameCube. But the fact is, Smash Brothers is Smash Brothers. You're gonna have fun. yeah. But uh, it was just it was just a lot of fun just having like four friends in the in the same room playing. Playing like a just a easy, straightforward fighting game. Yeah. Not yeah. like up, up, down, down, smash, smash, all the time. So, so it was really... a relieving game. Yeah. Absolutely. No, you're absolutely right. I mean, I got a Wii U, and because there's fuck all out for it, I've been buying a lot of Wii games, and like so I've had to pay a lot of. This them is what I kind of. This is. 
But yeah. I got like Zack and Wiki. Um, that's a lot of fun. <laughs> Mario Galaxy One and Two, two of the best games ever made. Yeah. I, mean, I picked up the Metroid Prime trilogy. I paid a lot for that because it's quite rare now. And I'm just going through all the old Wii games that I never played before because I wasn't actually a huge fan of the Wii. Yeah. If, if you look, <laughs> look, there's there's some brilliant stuff. There's some. Yeah, it's stuff. it's kind of funny because there were some really good games, but it's like heavily populated by ter- a lot of terrible there's third party games. Oh yeah. Shit on the Wii. Cooking Mama. <laughs> hey, I like Cooking Mama. If it wasn't for Cooking Mama, we wouldn't have Babysitting Mama. <laughs> you think about that. It's like Resident Evil Two without Resident Touché. Evil Two. There wouldn't be Resident Evil Four. Without Metal Gear Solid, there wouldn't be Revengeance, and there wouldn't oh, be. Oh Revengeance. God! But let's not get down that road. <laughs> let's move swiftly on to Alan. Alan. Get away! Get away! What do you consider to be an underrated console, there, Alan? Uh, I think I'd probably go with your one you were talking about, the Dreamcast. I think it's funny how you think about marketing life cycles and mistakes in in gaming. And your Dreamcast is probably your version of the Wii U these days. It was all down marketing. And the only reason the Dreamcast did what it did is through word of mouth. Yeah. You know, and and, and you could see this, this, um, I guess because I remember reading up on it and things like that. And, and at the time, looking at the hype around it, you had the developers looking into the console. Like you said, it was quite a good little console, but then they pulled back. And that's yeah. what's happened with the Wii U. It started out well, but because it was piss poor marketing, I um, mean, I remember yeah. speaking to somebody online and they didn't even realize Wii U was the next gen console. No, no, they, thought it, they, they thought it was an add-on to the Wii. I know, that's I've how spoken bad. to people, and they've said, what's the Wii U? Yeah! I'm like, oh, dude. But people think it's the controller, that's why. It got advertised yeah. as the controller. It, they it's all down to much on that. It is all yeah. down to piss poor marketing. People and focus it, 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 it's, it's probably the equivalent of Wii U and Dreamcast, probably on the same level right now of where they yeah. go. It's very the, only problem, the only problem we have now, well, the only difference is Wii U can pull this back. If it can start getting some... Yeah. In titles, it could pull it back. But I actually try to see him turn around and pull in the Wii U and bringing out another console in a year or two's time. It's That's funny. I, I think the only um like third party game that is kind of leading the way to try and promote the Wii U is Ubisoft. Yeah. <laughs> Surprisingly, yeah, the Zombie U is very good. I think it's very interesting, Alan, that you say about the word of mouth thing as well, because mm-hmm. a lot of the fans of the Dream, it, it's not like the PS2 where it's unanimously praised or the Xbox 360 where everybody's got one and everybody loves it. The Dreamcast, it's got a very small fan base, but it's a very vocal one. It's yeah. like a cult. Like people yeah. who like the Dreamcast <laughs> love the Dreamcast, and I'm one of them. You know, it wasn't massive, it wasn't huge, but it sold enough to survive, and yeah. the people who have it absolutely love it. Okay, then. So, Toby, uh, can you? What, what's your most underrated console? Um. Oh, I don't know. It would. I think for its games mainly because it's going to be the Wii, I'm afraid. Because it's like sales wise, that sold incredibly, but games wise, that didn't get a near as much, half, half as much recognition. Really, that's how you say it. Recognition is deserved for what it has. Yeah. Because some of the, the two that stand out for me, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that actually briefly, Zach and Wiki. Um, I don't know if you started playing it, but it's probably one of the most. Difficult, difficult. I don't know. You say. One of the hardest games I played. Yeah. Like it's a point and click game, and you have to try and obviously point the right place at the right time, click the right things, and but the the um the visual style of it was really cool, and the way they just the, the whole the whole idea of Black and Weekly was just brilliant. In yeah. My opinion, yeah. Really. I play, started playing it a week ago. I put it on the shelf for the time being because I've got such a massive back catalogue. And my problem with Zack and Wiki was that it was a point-and-click game. I'm used to point-and-click games working a certain way. I'm not used to point deductions because I didn't solve it quickly enough. Or, you know, oh, I want, yeah. you know, I want a specific solution and I want to be able to reach it. I don't want to have to restart. Uh, you know, I don't want to have to restart a section because I didn't figure it out quickly enough or cleverly enough. That was oh, one. Yeah, I mean, so that's yeah. where that's where the strategy came in. You had to think what to click where, and like you had to yeah redo some. And I don't know. It depends which way you, which way you like your games, I guess. But that wasn't a problem for me. Yeah. Um, and then and then another one um, would be Little King Story. If you haven't already picked that up, pick it up now. Okay. <laughs> Little King Story. It looks 
like someone's drawn it with a crayon. Yeah. <laughs> but in a good way. It's kind of a mix between Pikmin um, and Farmville. <laughs> But not in a bad way. Uh, yeah, yeah. You don't raise crops or anything, but you have your little army. You have a little. little I heard good things about it. Yeah, me too. It's, it's such an under underrated little gem, and there's so many of them on on the way, and like they just didn't. They, I can't even think of them because so there's there's loads, but they didn't get any anywhere near the recognition they deserved, and it's 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 sad to see that. But yeah, it's, but for that reason, I would say the Wii and its back its catalogue of games, but not the actual Wii. In general, because I'd also I'd also say the GameCube, because in the same respect, the GameCube also didn't get. I think you're right about the Wii because a, a lot of a loads of people own it. Very few of them are aware of how good some of the games were. People, yeah, people that it bought get, the Wii it got it. messed by all, all the stupid third party games that decided to jump in on the waggling bandwagon. Yeah, so just dance and we fit. And all the Wii remote, let's just shake it to make a baby thing. <laughs> and then make a game out of it. Like yeah. I think the thing with that is, that, but you have to you have to pick out pick out the, the weed, as it were. Even though the weed, I don't, I'm, sorry, I'll even though the Wii um sold so well, and, and to say it was an underrated console, it, it would be quite funny to say because it actually was overselling yeah. both the PlayStation and Sony one time. You're right because it's underrated in the fact that once the hype had died down, the novelty had worn off. Yeah, I I even, I, I even not, saw it's not a no novelty because yeah. the, the way they but the... unless you're like a hardcore Nintendo fan, you don't yeah. keep your Wii. I know loads of people that bought Wiis and traded them in. I was yeah. one. Of them. I was one. It's of them. like the novelty has worn off. I'm done now, that's and that's where we become underrated consoles. So you're right in what you're saying. Yeah, that's I'm agreeing where, with where you. Nintendo are though, kind of thing. I think with every the way I've seen it with a lot of people who've had Wii's and whatnot, if you've got a Wii or an Xbox, people always favour the Xbox if you've never had a Nintendo console. Because with the, I think with the fans of the Wii, that they go back from all of them. Like, yeah. you don't just pick for Wii and become a Nintendo fan. Like, you can, I'm not saying you can't, but a lot of them, they like me, you, you've just grown up playing Nintendo games. That's the thing with Nintendo, that they have a retro feel about them. And if you don't have that from the beginning, you're not going to get that, picking it up midway through their cycle. And That's we're seeing that with anyway. Wii U now. We're seeing that with the Wii uh, U now. People who picked it up, which is in the millions, haven't in, they have not instantly become Nintendo fans. No. Otherwise, the Wii U wouldn't be in the position it's in. Yeah, so, I think that with the Wii U, they've gone wrong with the... Although we... Some, the Nintendo, Nintendo, sorry again, Nintendo sometimes lacks in third-party support. I think they've done too much now. Because the yeah. Wii U's got... It's got hardly any... It's got Nintendo Land. And Zombie U, they're the two like standout games, and then the rest are all third party. And yeah, it has been marketed really badly, but I... for a future one, I think that's going to be a, it's probably going to be underrated as well because their social aspects of the game is a really good. What they've done with the the Miiverse, as it's called, um, is really do, is really well done. That's one of the standout points for that. But yeah. that's, that's another story we can do. <laughs> but yeah, so I'd say the Wii. Okay. Yeah. No, you've raised some very interesting points there, I think. So, no, you're, you're right about the Wii, and it's, that's a very good way of looking at it. I think you've pretty much hit the nail on the head about the Wii is both a success and a failure in its own respect. Because but, actually, um, I think the Wii did kind of sort of influence the other gaming markets to absolutely. do motion control. I was going to say that as well, yeah. Hmm. That too is so, true. Nintendo has their way of bringing out their innovations, but some will give them a flop, some won't, but. That where they where they leave, others follow. I'm afraid. <laughs> yeah, because it's because play, Sony is actually doing that right away that with Wii U now. Yeah. Yeah. With okay, the Vita so... and except it's going to cost a lot more if you want to do that. Yeah. A so lot more. Let's move on to William then. William, can uh, I understand if you've been a PC gamer all your life? Maybe you think the PC is an underrated console, but um, what do you think is a very underrated way of playing games? Maybe the GameCube. The GameCube, good man. I quite like the GameCube, but I'd never thought, well, at my age when I had it, there was never enough games that piqued my interest for it, even though I yeah. thought it was really cool. So I never really got into it as much, but I did like the console, and it was really frustrating at that time, and I eventually yeah. just got rid of it and got a PlayStation 2. GameCube did kind of look awesome, because it was like all the other consoles were like, rectangle boxes, rectangles. But it's like, but when it was GameCube, it was like, 
proper cube. <laughs> <laughs> and mean, ridiculously yeah. tiny discs. Because, <laughs> I mean, like, take the Xbox, for example. As a box, it failed. <laughs> I, could neither, I could neither remove and put things into my Xbox. Uh, the GameCube, at least, you know, no pretensions. It was a cube of game. So, don't, that is one really fucking cube game. I know. That game is cube, man. <laughs> Pretty square. Cube game. All right, I, I want everyone here to leave today and try and make cube a like active word to describe something as good. I'm going to cube the fuck out of that. <laughs> or make it like fuck, where everything's cube. Hey that's babe, well some cube. cube ass game. You want a cube? That's, that is one cube <laughs> ass game. I like Martin's, I like cube ass game. Yes! <laughs> Martin, you have won the cube war. Internet memes, here I come. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs>
They have gone so third party because they're so worried about the connect. They're so worried about the Xbox becoming an entertainment box. It's like, where's the fucking gamers? We, <laughs> us as gamers, us as dedicated gamers, put you on the market. Your Xbox was okay. It was good. It was good fun. And we worked hard to bring the Xbox up to its popularity. You then gave us Xbox 360. And from the get-go, awesome. Brilliant debut titles. The new Halos. You had your Gears of War. You know, it all looked good on the 360. And then from there, you brought in your professional. Thought that was going to be your game changer. And instead of letting it go and going, sorry, well, we were wrong. Sorry, guys. Let's concentrate on games. You're being stubborn and you're pushing the professional down everybody's throat. And that's what's going to be the death of the you coming into the new console. Because you're now an entertainment box than an actual games console. End of. Well, very succinct. I like. Well, you just, trying to I see think... why. You see why I, I, what I'm trying to say, don't you? I, yeah, yeah, I do. I do. I, I do. And I think it's amazing when you talk about like fanboy wars. It is amazing yeah. the things people will go to to make a point. And I think it, it's quite sad, but you're right. People will buy a console out of spite. They they won't make an educated like assumption. And this is what consumers are like these days. There is. Um, you, you know, there, there is this kind of culture about being, like, militantly dedicated to, like, one brand. Like, people who, like, Apple fans are the fucking worst. Uh... Apple fans. Oh, my <laughs> Apple just works. It never crashes. Two words for you, bitch tits. Colour wheel. Toby, um, what, what are your predictions for the future? Um, well, it's a combination of all of what you've just said, really. Um... um... What, even the thing about the cyborgs? Yeah, apart from the cyborg bit, that was a bit far fetched, but you know. Um, it, it, right. it might not be. Yeah, I was going to say, it might not be. I want you to think. No, in 2030, yeah. singularity event happens. Come on, let, let Toby right. continue. Come on, Toby. Um, yeah, I reckon the, what needs to happen is, yeah, what, you were, what everyone was saying previously, stop the emphasis on all the graphics and everything being, this looks amazing, brilliant, why? because it's got such good HD graphics by it. That doesn't make a game, in my opinion. No. There is always other parts that combine to make the whole aspect of it. And with so many games, they come out, and it's just focused on the graphics. The graphics, every console that comes out, like the graphics are better. How They, ca they can't get any better than what they are, but like current... You guys... Um... PS4 and all HD console graphics. I don't know how they can get any better. So the way forward for me would be, I think they should. Um, I like the aspect of having kind of multifunctional gaming consoles, like with yeah. the Xbox and the PS4 with the DVD and Blu-ray, and that's good. And having love film and um, Netflix and stuff like that. I think that's really cool. And like as I touched upon previously, the community aspect of the Wii U is really good. Yeah, uh, it's kind of like a Facebook for games, for gamers even, because you can literally pause the game, you can post a screenshot while you're playing in the Miiverse, ask for help, like people respond really quick, and you can do this while mid-game, so like the social aspect there, and they've got a spot on. It just That's one of my favourite things about the Wii U, is that social Yeah, aspect. I'd get stuck in the game, leave a little message, or like... I think that's what I do as well, yeah. And people will always have a response, like Zombie U, I was like... Yeah, oh, I've never not got responded to it. Zombie U's got a fantastic community, I mean, like, I, I've written things have you seen about it. Have, have you seen sorry, I was gonna say, have you seen the Year of Luigi community? The, no, I haven't, I haven't. There's, there's a Year of Luigi community, which made my <laughs> evening. Um, but, um... Although actually, well, they might be going for a surprise approach, you know, you're getting all these rooms out and then bam, do something different. Yeah, maybe, you never I know. I mean, to be fair, it's, it's all speculative. It, but, yeah. It's all speculative, it's all rumours, and until they're both out there and then you can make your decisions, that will be. But I kind of see both arguments. I can understand how PS4 can take it, given everything they've shown so far. I mean, to be fair, Xbox now are doing where the PS3 went wrong when it first released. They're yeah. having a private conference not involving any of the fans, the people that built the fucking Xbox franchise in the first place. I do believe that because we are the best multiplayer apart from um, in terms of consoles going. We really do. We have some of the best clans, some of the UX experience. And it's like done wrong. They could screw themselves up. But even though they do that, 
I don't see them falling out of the market. I don't see it happening. I just feel very blah. To be fair, I think they're going to go free multiplayer. They could do. They could do I that. Do. They, yeah. That's the biggest complaint. And if Xbox, <laughs> if Xbox aren't going to listen to that one, God fucking knows what they're going to do. <laughs> My biggest of, thing be is... Bees at you if you don't download quickly enough. Or I, have, I have to buy Xbox Gold just to play Injustice with Alan next like like couple of weeks. Ugh, you do, I'm afraid. Forty, 40 quid. <laughs> I think mean, sixty-five quid. Fifty-six. Oh, God, yeah, yeah. It's they couldn't. Up. It's gone up. I'm not going to get excited until at E3, like you know, Xbox representative comes out and says, "All right, now here we have Christopher Lee on a flamethrower guitar." <laughs> 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 He's already in a metal band. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's fucking Charlemagne shit. So, let's get on to the one I'm looking forward to. We've been a little light on laughs and anger this week, so hopefully we can wrap that up with a question for, uh, what's your worst console? I'm going to offend at least two people here and say that for me, the N64 is... Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, like in the end of the Indiana Jones, when they open up the Ark of the Covenant and their faces melt off. <laughs> That's me when I hear people talk about how great the N64 was. Because, uh, all right, first of all, the fuck is that controller? That <laughs> is a manta ray that fucked the Starship <laughs> Enterprise. Right? You've got a D pad. You've got. It's got. I don't have. I'm not fucking Vishnu. I can't. Hold, <laughs> <laughs> Where no gamer has gone before. That pad, at the same time, your D-pad's over there, your, con your control stick's here, and the control stick turns into a chalky dust the more you use it. You go around somebody's house, and their N64's been set up for ages, look under their control sticks, there is a chalky white <laughs> residue from where that has <laughs> suffered wear and tear, because basically a needle on the end of a ball. Let's move on. Um, Ocarina of Time, uh, judged by many to be uh, the best game of all time, it's Didn't not, like it. and it's the worst Zelda of all time. Ego Raptor it, agrees it, with it, that. I know, it is the worst Zelda of all time. It runs at two frames per second, the textures look like they were done in Microsoft Paint, Hyrule has nothing running around, no life at all, except for a couple of skeletons that pop up and go, we are adversaries, hit the B button. Don't forget the, the camera... water temple. The Water Temple doesn't even come into it. Sure. That, is the, that is the least of Ocarina of Time's problems. Uh, I just think... And another thing as well, you were talking earlier, and I really wanted to butt in. I so wanted to butt in. Resident Evil 2 did come out on the N64, yeah. a year after the PlayStation yeah. version. And the best thing that everyone could talk about in N64 magazines was, guys, it's got an FMV intro. And the PlayStation people are and like, this proves that the N64 is the best fucking console of all time. And the PlayStation people are looking at it going, we had that a year ago. We've got that now. What was the first game to come out on the PlayStation? Second? Oh, yeah, we had it then as well. I just, the N64, what a horrible bloody console. On that bombshell, guys, I think it's time to say we've learned a number of things tonight. Firstly, all consoles should have handles. Secondly, the N64 is the most divisive console on the planet. And thirdly, there is no thing noisier than a Dreamcast. Everybody, if anybody would like to say their goodbyes. Peace. Bye. Cheerio. Have a cube out of motherfuckers. And keep it with the gamingrig.co.uk.